Hi, this is Manos Brilakis presenting video 8.2.7 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This video describes the indications as well as a step-by-step -step approach to the move the cap techniques, namely the scratch and go and the base. Those acronyms are often a source of confusion, which we will try to clarify during this video. Those techniques are part of the undergrade dissection and re-entry. Undergrade dissection and re-entry involves advancement of the guide wire in the extra plaque, what we previously used to call subintimal space, followed by re-entry into the distal trulumen. The move the cap techniques create intentionally an entry into the extra plaque space proximal to the proximal cap, and that is why they are called move the cap techniques. This is the CTO proximal cap. What is happening in this particular case is we find a way to advance the undergrade guide wire into the extra plug space that goes through the occlusion and then once again re-enter distally. There are two move the cap techniques. One is called the scratch and go and the other is called the base or balloon assisted subintimal entry. Both have the same goal, which is to advance an undergrade guide wire into the extra plug space proximal to the proximal cap. But they achieve it in different ways. Specifically in the scratch and go, we have a stiff guide wire and a microcatheter that goes uh, uh, into the extra plug space. That wire is removed and then we advance the polymer jacketed wire. In contrast, in the base technique, we have a slightly oversized balloon that is inflated, dissecting, creating dissections proximal to the proximal cap that are then used to advance a guide wire into the extra plug space. So two techniques, scratch and go, and balloon-assisted subintimal entry. When should those techniques be used? Four indications. The first one is when there is an ambiguous proximal cap. When we don't clearly understand where the CTO is starting, it is advantageous to start the dissection proximal and then use the extra plug space to remain within the so-called vessel architecture. Second, is for wire impenetrable proximal caps when the cap is so calcified that it cannot be penetrated with a guide wire. The third one is for balloon uncrossable and the fourth one for balloon undilatable lesions. Again, for ambiguous proximal cap, there are essentially three major techniques to resolve the ambiguity. One is to use the intravascular ultrasound. Second is to use the move the cap techniques. And the third one is to go retrograde. So move the cap is one of the three major approaches to resolve the ambiguity. When it comes to an impenetrable proximal cap, we can, we can ad address this by either getting through with more powerful guide wires and more support, or by essentially going into the extra plug space, either undergrade or retrograde, to bypass that impenetrable proximal cap. When it comes to the balloon and crossable lesion, the subintimal, which now should be extra plug techniques, are used if everything else fails. So if all maneuvers to advance a balloon or microcatheter fail, then the last resort is to go extra plug proximally and use the softer extra plug space to advance equipment. And then for balloon and dilatable lesions, the same thing. If everything else fails, or the high-pressure balloons, Plug modification balloons, intravascular lithotripsy, very high pressure balloon, atherectomy, laser. If everything fails and the lesion is still undilatable, then the solution is to go extra plug and essentially crush the plug from the outside. What are the limitations of the move the cap techniques? First one is that if there is a major branch proximal to the proximal cap, and we start the dissection proximal to that branch, these branches are likely to be occluded. So we try to avoid doing this technique where there are important branches, for example, large diagonal branches into the diagonal or large obtuse marginal into the circumflex. And also we should not forget that getting out in the extra plug space is the first step of the procedure. And then once we do that, the operator needs to have the skills and the tools to be able to re-enter into the distal true lumen. 
So re-entry, whether it was the Stingray or we start with whatever technique is important when we use any ADR technique, including the move the cup techniques. All right, so focusing now on the, its technique and uh, presenting a step-by-step -step approach. First of all, for the scratch and go. The way to do this is we advance a workhorse guide wire close to the proximal cap, or at least where we think the proximal cap is. We then advance the microcatheter. We take a stiff tip wire. So this is the Confianza Pro 12, the Hoarder 14. And uh, we have a steep band, nine degree bands. And we advance it barely into the wall of the vessel. And this is critical. If the wire goes too far, then we'll have a perforation. And that's important because after we advance the guide wire, then we advance the microcatheter into the extra plug space and uh, remove this stiff tip guide wire. The next step is to get a polymer jacketed wire, which is pushed without rotation until it forms a knuckle. The knuckle is then advanced across the CDO, followed by re-entry distally. The usual polymer jacketed wires we use for this are the Gladius Mongo, but also the Filder XT can be used, and the Pilot, uh, Pilot 200 can be used, although the Pilot 200 and the Raider form larger knuckles. This is an example. We have a right coronary artery CTO that has an ambiguous proximal cap because we have all these little branches and we're unclear about where the occlusion actually starts. This is a different view to see if some views can help us understand better where the proximal cap is. But once again, this is very confusing. We don't really understand where the CTO is starting. And another view, yet another view. The lateral view can be often very useful for the RCA. But here again, where is it? Is this branches? This can be a bridging collateral. It is unclear where is the proximal cap. So what we did is we advanced a microcatheter and a Confianza Pro 12 guide wire that was uh, used to poke into the wall of the vessel proximal to where those branches were originating. We now see that we have created a significant dissection. So once the dissection has been created, now we can use a microcatheter and advance a knuckled polymer jacketed guide wire that seems to advance along the course of the vessel, goes all the way down, re-entry is achieved, and then we have a nice final result. Moving on to the base technique, or balloon-assisted subintimal entry. The first step is to advance a guide wire proximal to the proximal cap, and the second step is to get a balloon proximal to the proximal cap. Very important to make sure that the balloon is not within a side branch. The balloon should be sized one to one or one to two uh, over one, depending on the diameter of the vessel proximal to the proximal cap. So we want it slightly oversized so that uh, it overextends and dissects, creates dissections in the wall of the vessel. We typically inflate in low atmospheres, eight to 10 atmospheres. And now we have created these um, dissections in the wall of the vessel, similar to what we were doing in the scratch and go. We advance a microcatheter, advance a polymer jacketed wire. Again, Gladius Mongo is the most common, but Filder XT, Pilot 200, Raider can be used as well. And then we advance it distally until uh, we find uh, a good spot for the end into the distal true lumen. Very important when advancing the polymer jacketed guide wire both for the base and the scratch and go, is to use orthogonal projections to ensure that the knuckle is moving along the, along the dissipated course of the vessel. So what I described to you is a traditional base technique. However, what we currently do, what I like to call the contemporary base, is using a combination of the balloon for creating dissections, but also having the microcatheter right there along with the polymer jacketed guide wire. So essentially, it's a combination of the base technique with a power knuckle. Power knuckle means you have a microcatheter and a balloon inflated next to the microcatheter, essentially pushing uh, the microcatheter against the wall of the vessel and helping the guide wire, which is a polymer jacketed wire, to advance into the wall of the vessel. 
And these are some examples. This is a right coronary artery CTO. We do have a balloon inflated in the middle vessel, and we see the undergrade microcatheter that is halfway along the course of the balloon. And then by having this balloon inflated, we then advance uh, a polymer jacketed wire that um, eventually finds its way into the extra plug space and forms an angle. A variation of the base technique is called side base. And side base is useful when we have a significant branch at the proximal cap. So what is done is we advance a workhorse wire into the side branch, and then we advance a balloon halfway into the main vessel and halfway into the side branch. We then inflate the balloon. So the balloon prevents entry of the guide wire into the side branch, which is the common result when we advance wires with the branch next to the proximal cap. And then we advance a polymer jacketed guide wire through the microcatheter into the extra plug space until it goes distally and then we re-enter. So essentially the side base is very similar to the contemporary base. We do have a microcatheter that is uh, anchored by the balloon. The balloon provides more support to the microcatheter, but also it prevents the guide wire from getting into the side branch and helps the guide wire enter into the extra plug space. This is an example um, of um, a patient who has uh, a right coronary artery with uh, a side branch, that's an acute marginal branch, right at the proximal cap. We initially got uh, um, a balloon into that area. And then what is happening here is that the balloon is into this acute marginal, it's inflated, and then the knuckle finds its way into the distal vessel. So balloon halfway into the side branch, halfway into the main vessel, pushing the knuckle, the knuckle cannot go into the side branch, and eventually finds its way into the distal vessel. This is another example. We have an LAD CTO with a cap right at the takeoff of this large septal branch. So it's hard to know exactly where the cap is. So what we do here is we advance a balloon halfway into that septal, halfway out. Microcaster is there as well, supporting, supported by the balloon. We push a polymer jacketed wire and the wire finds its way into the extra plug space. So once again, combination of balloon inflation, extra support, knuckle wire is being pushed. Eventually, it creates a knuckle, and the knuckle follows along the course of the LAD. Of course, when that happens, it is important to confirm that we're indeed in the anticipated course of the vessel. So we do orthogonal projections using contralateral or, in this case, ipsilateral injection. And we see that we are actually inside uh, uh, the vessel architecture, we are dancing, as we say, with the distal vessel, and then we're able to get through. So to summarize, the move the cap techniques are two. One is the scratch and go and the balloon-assisted subintimal entry. We use them for four indications, specifically for ambiguous proximal cap, wire impenetrable proximal cap, when we have a balloon uncrossable or a balloon undilatable lesion. And the way we do it, in the scratch and go, microcaster gets into the wall after advancing a stiff tip guide wire. And then after the microcaster is in the wall, the stiff tip wire is exchanged for a polymer jacket that is supposed to dissect. In the balloon-assisted subintimal entry, which is currently the preferred way, actually, it might be a little safer because we're not poking stiff guide wires in the wall of the vessel. We do have uh, the balloon proximal to the proximal cap, the balloon is creating a dissection, but also the balloon is anchoring an undergrade microcatheter through which we advance a polymer jacketed wire that uh, then is directed into the extra plug space because uh, the balloon not only creates the dissections, but prevents the wire from getting into the true lumen. After we go extra plug, it is very important to be able to get back in. Hence, it is important to have experience with the Stingray, Star, and other forms of re-entry. Thank you.